Kinetic K. Grab a cup of hot tea and pull up a chair. We're going to do another pet portrait. Today I'm working on a 20 by 20 canvas, which is a deep profile canvas that you can hang on the wall without having to frame it. It's about one and a half inches deep and you paint it along the sides. I have started our canvas by putting a coating of wet Indian yellow uh, paint to start with and just put it all over the canvas. And then I've also um, put a little bit of a kind of a brownish color in the center. And then I've taken our photograph and blown it up onto um, a little 8x10. On top of that, I took this really cool tool. I don't even know what it's called. Uh, some people call it a paint scraper. <laughs> I don't think that's what it is. It's a rubber tipped tool. I think they use for um, some pottery stuff, but it really works well for drawing into your paint that's already on canvas. So what I did was I measured out a little bit. I took a look at my picture and on this brown paint, I have just taken and marked out by removing some of the paint a little bit that was wet. I've made my marks and then if, I, if I'm off on something, all I have to do is just take a rag and wipe it off and it works really well that way. So this is just to get me started. Part of the reason I'm off to the side and so when you're painting, you want to be directly in front of what you're painting, otherwise something's going to go askew. So just keep that in mind. Stay right face to face with your canvas anytime you are painting something. All right, so I'm going to begin today by, um, by using a little bit of a smaller brush just to kind of get things established and make sure that my initial little scraping of paint is in the right place. I start generally in the middle of uh, the dog's muzzle by working in the nose area to begin with. Now, if you watched our last video, you'll remember the first line that I make is the line that divides the nose down the middle, and uh, it doesn't go all the way to the top again. It is just one line down, and then I begin with uh, by putting a an arrow at the bottom. Pretty easy, and most dogs are like this. Okay, then I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to locate the side of the dog's nose and it's really like the number six. And on the other side, we have a reverse number six, or I'll just say uh, the letter J with a little ball on the end of it. And then I'll connect up the top of those letters and numbers. And down here, I will bring these together. And this is just basically my basic shape. So it's kind of got a little arrow and the number six and the backwards number six. That's just how we start every one of these little noses. Now this is a, um, a black nose with a little bit of a pink on the top. And uh, watch it when you're looking at your photos. This part of the line that comes down below the nose uh, that kind of bifurcates the face right there, it is not very long. And then it just moves down and makes that little baggy part of the muzzle that hangs over the mouth on this particular dog because he's on on the side of a truck. So I'm just going to put the little chin under there. I'm also going to not worry about the fact that there's white hairs that go over the top of this black part of the mouth. Uh, I put those on later. you got to put what's underneath first, the dark part first, and then the light part goes on top. All right. So I'm going to grab a little bit of brown to mix in with the black um, because I don't like to use just straight black for very long. It just uh, It's a very dull color and it doesn't register very nicely. So uh, here we go. Uh, it just sort of uh, begins to shape. Now um, this color right up here on the top of the, the dog's nose is a cadmium red. It's a fleshy tone. It's a cadmium red mixed with a little bit of raw sienna, okay? And that just gives a nice little uh, fleshy pink part of the nose. Um, and then I put that in, a little bit more in the red. I'm gonna put that in 
and then I will add the darker color as it turns to the side. But first I'm going to get the red part in uh, and it comes down to about halfway or right as the nose turns it's a little bit that color and then it, it gets darker uh, as it goes a little bit farther down the nose but we'll start out with that that nice pinkish color and while I've got it here I might as well just put a little bit of the highlight on I don't usually put all those marks on until the very end but it's kind of fun to see and then I'll put a little bit there and a little underneath the nostril so that and then I can get really detailed by uh, just taking a little bit of a, a smaller brush later on and making little dots you know as the as the light hits there it's a very textured skin it's like the cells are just divided in a, in a large pattern that you can see thank goodness our skin isn't quite so so uh, uh, the, the pores aren't quite so big but on a dog's nose yep you can see them okay and then underneath the nose is that really dark area and it's a, a kind of it's almost black it's very dark brown and then we'll just circle it around underneath the nose you can barely see the the change in the shape under the nose as it hits the upper lip uh, it's there and then I'll, I'll blend this in a little bit here I don't want the tonal value to be darker than the nostril the nostrils got to be the darkest tonal value uh, right there but it does need to be relatively dark now underneath the mouth is a little bit of a, a darker raw sienna so I've just left what's on my brush and added raw sienna here we go it's a shadowy color all right now let's move up a uh, little bit of brown and a little dark brown right here as it moves up and I'm going to make a little correction on my nose it was a little bit too wide so I can correct it as I'm going all right now I'm going to go to a raw no a burnt sienna which is a, a rust color and find out where the the bridge of the nose turns I'm going to take that same raw or burnt sienna <laughs> I keep getting them mixed up burnt sienna is a very dark brick color it's a brick color and we'll find where a few of these borders or or changes in in angles occur now when you're painting I'm I'm using a little bit of thinner right now and then later on I will use something called neo megilp which I always say is Klingon for marroge it's just an old uh, timey-wimey kind of uh, a medium that helps your paint to move a little bit longer in stroke and it also gives it a nice sheen in the end but but initially I'll just use a little bit of thinner uh, uh, in my first layer okay a little bit bigger brush now I'm going to grab this big brush and I'm going to take the burnt sienna the brick color I'm going to find where the ear folds and put a little bit more of my mineral spirits or odorless thinner I like uh, the Gamsol odorless thinner there's a lot of different kinds I'm not sure if this is just a generic one that I've got going on right now now remember when you uh, I'm going to add a little bit of uh, burnt umber when you uh, do these the ears I know this is a lighter colored dog and what I'm laying down seems to be quite dark but I have to start out with the dark in order for you to see when I put the lighter color on top if I don't do that the lighter color won't register meaning you won't be able to see it okay if I don't put a dark color down first you can't see the light without the dark there's something to be said philosophically about that as well this is the the side where of the face and I know that I is going to fit somewhere in here I'm just going to locate it and hope I'm right and give this a little bit of a there we go sad puppy look and a little eyelid 
And double check, double check, double check. Yep. All right. I think we're right. Hopefully I'll be able to find where the other one goes now, but I'm going to work my way up. I've got this little part of the gel and here we go up the side of the face. And then we put the, the um, part of the ear that kind of turns back. The light is coming from over there, this direction. So always know which direction your light's coming from. Otherwise, your painting will not make much sense if you kind of don't understand that to start with. Now, I know where the ear is there, and now I'm going to go ahead and take my dark uh, burnt umber and figure out where that eye is I've, uh, on the, um, the portrait. There it is, right there. Like I'm asking myself, how far is it away from this point of where the ear hits the side of the face. A little bit of yellow ochre and, and a little white in that yellow ochre as well. I'm also going to test out and see what happens if I put a little bit of transparent orange. Now a transparent orange color is one made by Gamblin. I'm not sure if anybody else makes that, but uh, one of my favorite colors of all times because it's just a uh, um, it's it's just fascinating. You can do almost anything with it, um, especially for dog paintings. There's transparent orange with a little bit of white, and the hair begins to just pop up with this. It's just a little flat, bright brush. Um, that uh, what number is it? I have no idea. It's a size four, protege, uh, bright, um, which just means it's very flat, and and kind of square and short on the on the. Uh, on the thing, on the edge. Okay, so uh, the around the eye is a bit of a mid-tone or darker, um, dark to mid-tone. And above it is, we'll just take a little bit of that transparent orange and some yellow ochre, and now I'm going to hit it with that. It's just a lively, lively color, and it begins to uh, make this the thing just kind of pop out. The yellow ochre, a little bit of transparent orange, white, and we're going to work our way up and I'm going to start at the edge of this and move. I'm, I'm just doing the very edge where the light is coming out onto the ear as it turns around. Just watch the, the direction of your hair. Make sure that you... Uh, we live up in a, in a cabin-like environment up in a um, cabin-like house in um, McCall, Idaho, and we're about 5,300 square feet, square feet, no, that's a big house, 5,300 feet elevation, and so we get a lot of snow. We're at about three feet right now, and we'll expect a lot more. All right, here's a little more of that serious, um, this, just a transparent orange. There it is. Transparent orange. Shoot, I should have just started the whole thing with the transparent orange and just build it up from there. I like it a lot. Okay, a little more of that. And I'll just keep building up the lights once I get this middle tone established with this orange color. I love it. Okay, a little more there. And we'll begin putting some of that yellow ochre, white, and orange right here as the ear turns back. Now remember, this is catching light. This one isn't. It's on the other side. So it's a little bit darker right here. The part that's catching light is the ear behind it. And so now I'm going to take that same mixture of transparent orange and yellow ochre, and I'm going to add a boatload of white to it. And we'll just get that ear popping out with this. And I'm, again, I'm going to put a little bit of medium on um, and begin to put some of this on. I've got this darker background underneath already. And so um, I have something to work with. If it's on a straight white canvas, you're not going to be able to see that. Okay, I'm going to take that same color and move it into here. Okay, now I'm going to uh, go back in and and put a little bit of dark um, 
a dark, dark, dark black into the middle of the eye, just creating a little bit of a personality. I don't know if you can see this. Uh, basically, I'm just making kind of a, a I call it with, the, with my kids in my art class, I call it a Pac-Man. And it's really just the letter C with a little chunk out of it. And then I'll go around the outside rim of the eye so that it leaves the brown in the center. And I try to do the, both eyes at the same time because uh, if you just have one eye and then you come back and do the other one, one eye might be so great that the other one's looking at it and you don't, uh, you don't seem to get a good even even effect. Okay, I'm going to, uh, at this stage, I'm going to take a little bit of the, um, the orange again with a little bit of white. Now, if the light's coming from over here, or shining down this way, it's going to come out here a little ways, and I'll make that lighter and orangey. Oh, I don't think I see that well enough. Let's try it again. So it comes out here. And there, okay, now you can see it's kind of a, a little bit of a nice light that comes out of the eye. And then I'll take the tip of my brush with a little bit of white and give it a highlight at about one o'clock. Here's one o'clock, maybe one, one thirty. Now you'll see photographs where the light, you might not even see a highlight, but I put it in anyway because it's so effective, it works really well. And I might put a little bit more in here. Ooh, isn't that nice? There, just just makes the dog really come to life. I love that. Okay, now we'll get a little dark brown. And don't forget the eyelid of the dog. It's just part of its little personality. And there we go. There's a little bit of that. We'll go do the same thing to this eye and establish this eyelid. And then I'll go back in and give it, uh, lighten up the inside as well. Here's a little bit of a, a mark there, and a little bit this way. The eye, the, um, oh, the tear duct and all that kind of stuff is in a dark, uh, dark color as well. And it's a dark rim around the eye, so it makes the eyes look even bigger than they really are. And then we'll go back in with some little bits of, of highlight. I'm gonna use a little bit of a light, light, light purple to just accentuate this area, the rim of the eye. Uh, maybe put a little bit here just to make it look sweet. The brush that I have is a round. This is a protege brush uh, and it's a number four. Um, the, it's more important that you know that it's a synthetic and it's a number four round and it just kind of uh, I don't use a lot of rounds, but but it's good for for getting in here and doing some of these little little pitsy little things that you have to do, a little picky things, little picky things. Okay, now around that dark area, it it seems to be we're moving in the direction of getting those hairs uh, in the right direction with that orange again, and I'll get my brush wet again. And so these kind of go in this direction. You're not just filling in color. You are also, you know, going along with the direction of the hair. You have to, you have to remember that. Okay, now let's get some of that lighter color. Uh, this time I'm going to do just the yellow ochre and white and see what that looks like. See, this is that bright with a flat edge, and it's going to help me just kind of base in or get the shape of the brow in and shapes of different things because it's light. It's where the, where the light hits the dog, where it's sticking out. That's where that light comes in. Really nice. Okay, put a little bit here. That little face starts sticking out. And let's see, he's got this muzzle starting to stick out right here, too. I'm realizing that I'm still a little bit in need of a little dark in order for this to stand out. So we'll get this put in 
combination of a little bit of the orange and the burnt sienna. I think it needs a, even just more burnt sienna. Let's try that. Got so much stuff on my brush. Do you need to wash your brush out every once in a while? I'm not like Bob Ross that just kind of have to wash my brush every five seconds just for fun. We don't really do that. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Because it's oil, I can now take my brush and begin to use what's on my brush to create this kind of illusion of hair um, just by hitting the black area of this his little mouth. And I just got the bright sitting, you know, kind of on its side. And I start just making little hairs by moving the thing that's already down into, um, we're just moving one area into another by creating little hairs. It's fun. It really is a fun thing. You see how I've got this kind of patched in in this light color? Let's see if I can get it just a little lighter. Okay, right, right there. See if I did that. Okay, now I've got an orange there. Maybe I'll make that a little bit darker uh, with a little bit of the burnt sienna and a little tiny bit of purple. Okay, here's two spots together, a light and a dark. Now I wiped my brush off and now I'm going to take this part of the muzzle and I'm going to move it by taking my brush and just creating hairs by just going over into the dark. And I pick up enough of the dark that it, it makes it really look very effective that way. Just instantly nice. Okay, now I need a little darker area here and then some light there. I'm going to do it again. We'll go uh, light right here. Patch that in. Uh, another bit of the uh, orange color around the nose. A little bit darker. A little darker right there. So I've got two kind of two stripey areas. One here, one here. And now I'm wiping my brush off and I'm going to do it again. I'm going to take it at an angle and I'll make the hairs. Oh, hello. Here's Jojo. He loves to help. <laughs> this is my cat, Joey. He likes to help. Don't you, you crazy thing. You're jealous of the dogs, aren't you? Yes. Okay, now we're going to have a lot of fun here in the studio with the cat. Yesterday, I, I got up and uh, found that he had gotten into the ultramarine blue and had ultramarine blue paint all over his belly. Okay, so I'm going to lay down. Um, maybe I might lay down the, the bridge of the nose like this. And I'll lay down some white paint like this. Okay, that's really drastic so that you can sort of see what I'm talking about. And then I turn my brush to where the it's like a blade going this way, the edge of the brush. And I begin, and I'll wipe it off each time if I have to, but I'll take that dark and move it into, I'm affecting it into the light kind of like this. And then I'll, I'll do the same thing. I'll just keep moving it. Uh, in the direction that the hair should go. Now, basically what you want to do is start with from the outside and work in. In other words, you want to do what's underneath first and then work your way up to the last bit. So really, I should be starting over here and then going, moving into the center, starting it on the outside and working the hairs in to where the last part is the center of of the shape that you're doing. So I might start right at the edge of this shape right there and work all the way into the middle of the shape and then work this part towards the center of the shape. Okay, now I'm going to make a little light part right underneath the eye here. And another one right here. And I'm just laying that in. Okay, I'm laying it in. A couple of spots. And then we'll go ahead and do that same thing with, that I'm talking about with the hair. Okay. And I could lay this in this direction even, like this. 
Okay, and then I could lay this one like this. I know that looks really goofy. Okay, and then I'll put the next layer in the next as the as the tone changes, as the ch the tonal values change or the colors change, and I'll put stripes going in this direction across the head. Now I'm not doing them random. I'm actually thinking about the shape of that dog's head. And then I will start. Where do I want to start? I'm going to start at the edge. And got my brush turned sideways. And I begin affecting it in the opposite direction. And then I am I could start up here uh, working from the outside edge and then working the next ones to where I'm working it towards the middle. And this one's towards the middle. And then I, I'm really, look. it looks just like little hairs. It's not a teeny tiny brush, it's a, you know, it's a flat brush. As long as it's got a good edge, you can do it like this. And you see how those those two, you know, stripes that we started with now just look like the head is just being shaped by them. It's awesome. It's really a fun, fun way to do something. You should try it. Laying it down and putting the final effect in the opposite direction that I laid it down. Let's go with this. We'll go a little bit more of that light. Try it again. So I'm going to just go like this and make the little hairs stand out there. Okay. The same thing for this is very, very light right here. We'll put it in, lay it down, and then put the orangish color on the outside of it like that. Two stripes. Start on that. Let's give it the edge a little bit of a light too. And then we'll start from the edge and we've wiped our brush off and we start making hairs moving in towards the center. Just chop, chop, chop. And then I'm going to do the same thing in the middle over here. Work my way towards the middle. There. That's working. So see, there's no real indication of that stripe that I led on there. It just becomes the shape of the, it just becomes the shape of the muzzle sticking out. Pretty cool. Okay, I'm going to put this cat down and <laughs> I'll be right back. Oh my goodness. I'm back from my break, and it was a bigger break than I anticipated. It's actually the next day, and uh, if you're really paying close attention, you might notice that this doesn't even look like the same painting. It isn't. It's the same canvas, but as I was looking during my break, I, I discovered there were a few angles and some things that were bugging me about it, and I needed to correct them. It's for a customer, and it needs to be right. So. I took a rag and some turpentine or some thinner and I wiped off the painting and I re-executed it using the very same principles I just taught you and uh, made the corrections and now I think I'm pretty happy. I hope you like it too. I did want you to see what one of my paintings looked like in a much more finished state and so I finished this one a little bit farther along. I have one more little trick that I'd like to teach you, and that's how to make whiskers. Now, I've got this brush right here, which is called a flat, or uh, you can use a bright, which means the end of this brush, regardless of how wide it is, is paper thin. And so when you have a paper thin brush, I then take some paint, I dip the very end of this sharp edge into the paint, and then I will apply it to the painting in a line. So I'll put, I'll put one length of the brush down and then I will add to it by 
setting the brush next to it, next to it, next to it, and I connect the dots until I get a full length of a whisker or a rope on a boat or whatever it takes, side of a building. Um, I use it for a lot of different things. I hope that's helpful to you. I like to teach you what I know, and the way I do that is if you subscribe, and then I'll be able to let you know when we make the next video. Uh, it doesn't cost you anything, and it just helps us know that you are enjoying uh, the videos and that you'd like to see more. If you'd like to see some more of my artwork or some more of my pet portraits, please go on to nettykstudio.etsy.com, and you can even order one if you like. Uh, or you can just keep trying to paint one. They're awfully fun. I'm so glad you joined us today. We'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye-bye.